Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 10th, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a phenomenal astrological week, without a doubt. Fully three planets are going to go retrograde. And even though as planets are retrograde, they become symbols of greater reflection, when a planet is changing directions, that moment when it stands still, preparing to either go backwards or forwards, it is especially close to the Earth. And it is in these moments when a planet is said to have especially concentrated energy. So imagine we've got three planets, Saturn, Venus, and Jupiter, all especially heightened in their energy for us now. And then you add to it Mars as we start this week at anorectic degrees. And what that means is Mars is at the very end of the sign that it is traveling through. Now, anorectic degrees are considered critical degrees, meaning that they represent a heightened energy of that given sign. In this case, it is the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius in and of itself is an energy of things moving very quickly, of erratic and surprising, if not revolutionary energy. Mars adding that much more heat to the sign. And it is going to be Monday that Mercury, also in an anorectic degree of Taurus, Taurus speaking to the economy, for example, currencies, for example, speaking in a conversation of frustration with that Mars. Well, you can see how chances are there'll be reports, there'll be conversations of this very frustration around the economy coming very much to the surface for many of us, for the masses now. But the encouraging thing is, is that the energy does shift and rather quickly. It will be on the same day that this conversation occurs that Mercury will change signs, moving into one of its home signs, Gemini. Now, Gemini is what we call a mutable sign. Uh, it is one of the four signs that occurs at the end of a season. We can sense that things are changing, that all things are ultimately fluid. And I think that this is actually going to be very encouraging for us in that we're going to be able to recognize whatever news comes out as we start the week, we know that this is ultimately a temporary moment, that things can change. And sometimes they can change rather quickly thanks to Mercury moving not only into a mutable sign, but its home sign becoming stronger in the process. This is gonna allow us to communicate more, to feel like we're getting information more easily. I do know that, for example, we still have Venus here and Venus holding a conversation with Neptune all month and pretty much on the exact square. Uh, there was a viral video that was released. Now, given this energy of uncertainty, this Venus and Neptune, oh, there's rightfully a lot of questions of accuracy about viral videos that are going around, especially that took place over the course of last week. Well, it is Mercury that is going to allow us, moving into the sign of Gemini, to find uh, a greater sense of detachment, a greater sense of rationality, greater sense of facts as well. And so reaching the masses in a pervasive but inaccurate way, well, that becomes a little bit less likely. However, just know Mercury will eventually over the course of the coming weeks also connect with Neptune. So that'll bring an interesting moment. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But I do really like the fact that Mercury is as a general principle moving into the sign of Gemini. This is more detached and yet it is not a sign that is necessarily concerned with truth as much. That tends to be some other vibrations. However, it does encourage us to seek out different perspectives, to expose ourselves to all kinds of information now and in the weeks ahead. What we will also have is the sun. The sun will be especially active this week. It is going to be the saving grace now. At the beginning of the week, speaking in harmony with Neptune. Now, I love that energy. I feel like it is one that encourages us to be hopeful, to have faith in ourselves, to have faith in each other. 
but it will be at the end of the week that power moves are going to occur. The sun will speak in supreme harmony with Pluto. This type of conversation happens twice a year, and when it occurs, it represents a time of focus and of transformation. And this energy is available to all of us. The sun is still in the sign of Taurus at this point, encouraging us to think about what we value, find strength in that, to create meaningful transformations, to align us with what we value that much more. It will be technically at the beginning of next week that the sun will speak in supreme harmony with Jupiter, but we will feel that energy building as we move late into the week. Now, this is considered one of the more fortunate days of the year. This connection also happens about twice a year, and when it does, it represents a time when we're able to take action on our own behalf and experience blessings and good fortune as a result. So that's some of the more immediate energies playing out. Let's come back to the big energies now. On Monday, Saturn will officially go retrograde in one of its home signs, the traditional ruler of Aquarius. And so imagine this, on the same day, right? Right around the same time, we have Mars at an anorectic degree at the very end, concentrating, heightening the energy of Aquarius. But then we've also got Saturn there, heightened in its energy in its own right, given that it is retrograde, going retrograde. These are two very different energies. Whereas Mars can be impulsive and have a sense of heightened emotion, heightened heat to it, it is Saturn that is stable, that is secure, that takes a more mature approach. And just like these two planets of different energies are at the beginning and at the end of the same sign, I do think that this represents a very stark dichotomy. I've been talking quite a bit about the age of Aquarius, about how it is this very time that is going to give us a glimpse into larger energies that are going to kick in more fully at the end of this year, but especially once we get into the middle of the decade, into 2023, 2024, once Pluto starts moving in and out and more comfortably into the sign of Aquarius for a nice long stay of 20 years, it is now that we are getting glimpses into what that larger cycle is going to be for us as humanity. And I do feel like that sense of dichotomy that I always talk about, this sign that has two very strong sides to it. On the one hand, it is for the collective. On the other, it is highly individual. On the one hand, it is about um, rationality, right? And scientism. And yet it is also about those uh, out there theories that don't necessarily have grounding to them, but are in the ether, are reaching the masses. Well, we are going to see these very themes be especially stark at the beginning of the week with all that is happening astrologically, not just with Saturn and Mars, but the fact that Mercury is actually bringing it to us. It becomes something that we are actually talking about, we're thinking about, we're discussing that much more. With Saturn representing stability, we are going to see how it is that we can create more stability for more people. What it looks like to be mature, where it comes to how we understand our role within the collective. But Mars is not an energy that is mature. It is an energy that uh, speaks to our very early childhood conditioning, sometimes before we could even speak. It speaks to our survival instinct that gets set at that point in our psychological development. And it is Mars that is associated as well with childhood childishness. Now we need both, right? To be fully functioning human beings, we need childlike wonder. We need that sense of impetus, the immediate life force that allows us to know that we are worth fighting for. But we also need that sense of morality, that sense of stability, or rather the internal structure that allows us to keep the bigger picture in mind that allows us delayed gratification where Mars is the instant gratification without thought 
of the wider implications. So we will see this dichotomy playing out, not just in the collective, but also within us as part of our individual journeys where we may have decidedly two different feelings, divided emotions around a single area of life where on the one hand, we will want to be impulsive, and yet we can see what a more mature approach will be, and then trying to find balance within it all. It will be as we navigate later into the week, right around Thursday, that we have Jupiter going retrograde, Jupiter energy heightened as we move through this week. Now, Jupiter right now is in the sign of Capricorn, and this is a sign where Jupiter uh, is not able to bring forward its very best, uh, according to the ancients. There are certain signs that Jupiter likes to be in, certain signs he's not crazy about being in. Well, this is one of those signs that he doesn't really like being in. And it is here that Jupiter can sometimes feel restricted, sometimes feel like he isn't able to bring forward uh, his greatest blessings. And yet, with Jupiter standing still in the sky, its energies so much stronger, so much more heightened, it brings with it that much more a desire to affirm social structures, to have hope that it is these very structures that we can trust or that can stay in place. And so this is where I do think we are going to see around the world renewed stimulus plans, if you will, um, ways in which to keep societal structures in place are gonna show up with this uh, retrograde. Personally though, this can be a time when we are looking at what it is that feels like it holds our lives together. Where is it that we feel that we respect the process? What is it that success is for us and uniquely for us? We're being encouraged now to see through illusions with all these various energies playing out, but it is Jupiter still in the sign of Capricorn that is going to bring us hope in the way that things have been, in what our traditional definitions of success have been for our own lives and our own individual journeys. It's the Aquarian energy that turns it on its head, that questions it, and yet the Capricorn energy still wants to believe. And so if you find yourself with renewed ambition, it doesn't really matter if it isn't coming from that authentic place within yourself. It's okay to hold it, to acknowledge it, to know that it has been there. Where it is that we are judging ourselves for where we feel we are in the hierarchy of society, well, some of that may come to the surface with Jupiter stationary retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. And yet Jupiter can also be associated with illusions. Jupiter is hope, but it is Saturn that makes it reality. Whatever it is that does come up, understand that this is part of a larger process. This is exactly where it is that we are supposed to be, exactly where it is that we need to be. This is the divine setup for really big transits that are set to take place especially at the end of this year when Saturn meets Jupiter in the sky, that is going to ground inspiration and make it real. That is going to take the hope, the dream, the optimism, and actually translate that into a different reality, a different lived experience. It will embody what otherwise would be a dream so that it is here now. We have a lot to look forward to. A week like this can have a variety of emotions and energies running very high, but it is by being willing to return to heart in some way that we remember what really matters. And I think what really matters is love and wisdom as well. Now the love though, let's talk about the love because the love is strong with a week like this. It is going to be on Wednesday, the same day that Mars changes signs, moving into hyper-compassionate Pisces, that we will also have Venus officially going retrograde as well. Venus, as we know, is goddess of love, but she isn't just about romantic love. That is one part of Venus, but she's also a love for humanity. And I think that that is going to be amplified thanks to Mars moving into the sign of Pisces. Whereas it is 
Aquarius is about the collective. Pisces is about the communion. It is about moving beyond the collective. It's about understanding that we're not all individuals together, but we are one. And it is that sentiment that is going to start to rise very passionately so for many people now. So this heightens a sense of compassion and genuine empathy for more people out there. But you add to this that Venus, the counterpart to Mars, a mythological counterpart to Mars, is also stationary in the height of her power. Well, what this tells me is that more of us are going to be considering what really matters and seeing that love is what really matters. Love for each other. Love for the genuine ways in which we can see ourselves in others as well. And what I'm hoping for is heightened empathy, a heightened love for the cultivation of information, the cultivation of ultimately information that leads to wisdom. I have spoken at length about this Venus retrograde season. I will link to it below. Again, you can see that video, but I do want to say for this week, all is not clear where it comes to matters of heart, whether that's universal love or romantic love. And yet it still matters. Love matters. It matters that we feel desire, that we feel not just compassion, thanks to Mars and Pisces, but also passion itself. That we believe that we can have love, that we are worthy of love, that there are options available to us. We are likely to see more people uh, take risks, be gutsy in order to connect with others. But at the same time, we do need to be careful because it's very easy to get caught up in fantasy with energy like this, to believe the story, to buy into the hope so fully that we lose our rationality. Now that sense of disconnecting from rationality, we're going to see that more and more as Saturn starts to go retrograde. And its energies, again, turn inward in an outward sense, become less practical. I am reminded of something I just saw uh, just before I started recording this, and that was uh, news that came out that now a lot of the scientific briefings that have been taking place, in particular in the United States, are now going to take place from home. So that uh, environment that has been there, that has been giving information to people in a structured way, well, now it's going to be at a distance. There's going to be a change in the way that scientific information is delivered and the way that scientific experts are sharing their information. And this should be especially interesting. This is Saturn going retrograde in Aquarius. And where it is that sentimentality starts to rise now, it is going to feel as if more of us are questioning what is factual and what is real. My hope is, though, that if we keep love as our guiding principle, well, it is from that space that at least we'll know what is best for us to do. If love is the guiding principle, then you can't help but be loving towards others. You can't help but be loving towards yourself. And the love is so strong now. The spontaneous, uh, surprising shows of love are going to be very much on display with Venus in the sign of Gemini. The sense of wanting to connect with each other in friendship, in equality, uh, in brethrenship, but romantically as well, all of that is going to feel especially high now and is no less valuable. That desire itself can have us making changes or taking chances that may be out of character. Now, I would also add Venus retrograde in Gemini, we might find our thoughts consumed by love. Now, whether that is directed towards a particular person or a particular possibility, remember with that Neptunian energy, uh, we can get very caught up in thoughts of romance or love or desire. We can also get very caught up in compassion as well. 
to the point where it becomes self-sacrificing in not healthy ways. We may see some of that uh, with this energy. But the hope is there that we remember our common humanity, that we reach out to each other and see ourselves in others, and that that could change our behavior to align it with our higher principles. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it is a powerful week. I love all these retrogrades. And part of the reason that I love them, even with the intensity of this week in particular, what I do love about this is that it encourages us to look within. It encourages us to take ownership, to go to the root of ourselves, of a matter, of our feelings with Saturn encouraging us to get to the root of where we can take greater ownership for our happiness, with Venus get to the root of where we can take greater ownership for love and self-love and using and holding love as a higher principle, letting that guide our actions. And with Jupiter, genuine optimism, looking within ourselves for hope and spiritual inspiration and letting that hold the structures of our lives together. These are powerful times as part of a very powerful year. And this week, the energy does get intense, but that means that it can be intensely loving. It can be intensely wise. Times like this reveal us to ourselves. But it is a week and the energy does pass. And like I said, as we navigate later into this month, once planets start to more comfortably be retrograde, that energy becomes more reflective. It becomes more subdued. But right now, for this week, there's not a lot of subduedness taking place. But rather, there is strength. There is willingness. There is heightened love heightened compassion, and if we are willing to hold it as a principle, if we are willing to see it, there is heightened wisdom as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on to nadiashaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week. Unlimited access to special horoscopes like the Venus retrograde special horoscopes that if you have it, it's a good idea to rewatch it right about now. And so much more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And of course, yes, the Venus retrograde special horoscopes are available for download on my site, along with the Saturn uh, special horoscopes as well. So with the Saturn special horoscopes, I look at the larger trend of Saturn in Aquarius. As Saturn stands still in the sky with its energies especially heightened, it's a good idea uh, to contemplate what the larger trend is here for you. Some important lessons that may arise that speak to this Saturn in Aquarius transit that'll take us right into March of 2023. Please do check out my books that are available now on Amazon and everywhere that books are sold. Prayers to the Sky is my most recent book. Uh, it has been very popular. I'm really so grateful for it. Uh, over the course of this week, I did this three-hour workshop on astrological magic, and all of that information is found in this book, but people absolutely loved that workshop that I did as part of astrologyrisingcostarica.com. I think that you can actually download the completed program. It really was an incredible experience, and you can download it. Uh, at astrologyrisingcostarica.com to enjoy forever. My other books are The Body and the Cosmos. Uh, this is me taking some ideas of Plato and applying it to an astrological sky. Like the nerd that I am, I would do something like this. Uh, but it was so much fun to write and very much from the heart. So thank you for making that as well a number one new release in New Age Astrology on Amazon when it first came out. My tried and true book that's been out for a few years is Astrology Realized. This is a guide, uh, a beginner's guide to chart reading. So it exposes you to the very first steps 
of understanding astrological knowledge and information, as well as a really thorough look at the historical and philosophical development of astrology in the first chapter of that book. My upcoming book is The Universe is Wise and Loving Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon. Now, this book, there's just a couple of days or weeks left in terms of being able to purchase it as an advanced copy directly from me. With that, you get a signed copy of the book. You're one of the first people to get it. It comes with over $200 worth of free gifts as well. So you can learn more about that on my website or at the Universe is Wise and Loving Dot com. And this book will be officially published and given to the world uh, August 22nd, so later on this summer. Uh, and so whether you get it then, whether you get it through me now, um, thank you. Thank you. You'd be very welcome to this. It is a labor of love. Any book that I write comes from the heart. And the nodes of the moon are so dear to me. And so I hope that you love it, that you gain some insights into these very important karmic points in your chart through my book, the first book, volume one of The Universe is Wise and Loving. Live events. I've got a bunch of online live events that are going to be taking place. Um, the upcoming event, some of the more Immediate upcoming events include a talk that I'm doing with Astrology Toronto online. I'm also participating in the NORWAC conference. Now that will be very special. The NORWAC conference uh, features some of the most renowned astrologers in the world today, all in one place. There are going to be five tracks going simultaneously. So the whole in-person event has now been moved online and it is truly going to be special and retain some of the same specialness with all the effort that the organizers are doing. I have no doubt that that intention will be fulfilled. And I will also be speaking, well, let's see, uh, the Stargazers group, Las Vegas Stargazers group, that event has been moved online as well. And I will be speaking in early June as well with um, ESAR, I believe it is. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to connect with each other in the online space. And I truly look forward to meeting you online. Links are in the description below. Finally, now you can get my unique take on your unique birth chart thanks to my partnership with Cosmogram. Delivered by email within hours of purchase. You can check out the link in the description below. But this was very much also a labor of love. And it is me actually, my interpretations as to the different placements of the planets in your birth chart. It's delivered as a report. The first report I ever had generated like this so many years ago uh, really was a catalyst for me to the work that I do today. And I hope that it is something that you cherish forever to have my take on your unique birth chart. So again, links in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. My hope for us, my prayer for us is that we navigate this time well knowing that this does fit into a larger, more loving, more wise vision for our lives individually, for the world as well. But it does require our intention to get there. And us holding love and wisdom as a guiding principle truly can make it a lived experience for more and more people. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.